it's an honor to be up here with so many cool ideas. Uh, so this is kind of uh, my first season starting out doing this. It's all kind of preliminary data and working at the kinks of essentially looking at these small scale snowfall patterns across highlight um, using just storm boards, a bunch of storm boards put up across canyon that I ski around and check after storms. Um, so that's kind of the basis of it. Um, I'm going to start by thanking Carl, of course. I kind of came to him at first with this idea, and he really helped me put it together. Um, ben, Ben and Boss, over there with the Sawtooth, uh, he helped me collect some data and bouncing ideas off of him because he skied a lot in Highlight as well. It was really useful. Um, and of course, um, Doug, Eric, and Alex for their support throughout the year and being able to kick ideas around with them. And they're really encouraging with um, having time apart to check the boards and that kind of thing. Um, I love these pictures too. This is like Eric with like classic, typical Montana snow packed up <laughs> right there. <laughs> um, and I was also able to compete with Alex for the most successful ghost ride of a sled, <laughs> which was uh, this track here. <laughs> uh, my like body print is right there. <laughs> Eric was like, one more hill will be fine. And yeah. It was well planned though. That was pure skill. It was. I bailed off, and my body weight leaving the sled was just enough to not hit the tree. <laughs> so. I'd call that some skill. <laughs> so I grew up in Butte, which is kind of by Bozeman. I moved to Bozeman for college, um, and I started skiing a bunch around Highlight. It's kind of where I cut my teeth in backcountry skiing. Uh, it's a really neat canyon. It has really interesting topography. Um, and after skiing a lot of days there, I'd check Shower Falls, which is the snow tell there, and go skiing, be in the canyon an hour later from checking the snow tell, and the snow tell is underreporting consistently by half, um, which is pretty, pretty large degree, um, especially when they're using it for forecasting. Um, obviously, snow tells are not for snow data; they're for water data, but they're an incredible tool for forecasters to use to look at that. And when it's underreporting by half, I mean, there's a pretty big difference between, you know, six inches and going out there. There's over a foot of snow um, in that same general area as the snow tell as well. So kind of noticing these patterns and um, yeah, knowing that complex orography drives sort of that spatial variability to some extent of where snow is falling, I kind of became interested in studying these patterns and um, yeah, started the project from there. A few other reasons why I highlight, uh, it's a high use area. So 10,000 visitors a month in the winter from a 2013 survey. So that's probably much higher now. So it sees a lot of traffic from backcountry skiers to cross country skiers. Um, it's a pretty high use area. It's also the main water source for Bozeman, as well as irrigation for the entire Gallatin Valley. Um, part of that comes from Highlight. So the water data that's coming out of there is pretty, pretty important. Um, it's accessible terrain. So Highlight's known for its really long, flat approaches, which people generally hate. Um, I really like because you can get up pretty high um, without really putting yourself into avalanche terrain a lot of the time. You can get, get up to 9,000 feet in pretty much any avalanche condition, which is useful for studying things up high. Um, Yeah, and it's also accessible after large storms. So they plow the road, which is nice. So I could get in after um, larger storms. Oh, and the other picture didn't load. But uh, it has great skiing, <laughs> uh, which is this side portion of this. So it was nice to know that if I went up to go check these storm boards after a storm, I could also generally get some good powder skiing in. Um, <coughs> So it's also nice because you have access to a lot of weather data and snow data there around the canyon. So we have the, the highlight, sometimes called the Flanders Weather Station, which is um, up in Flanders around 10,000 feet, which is nice because it's sort of uh, reporting like a wind that you can extrapolate to like an orographic flow. Um, 
and then you have the two snow tiles. We have Lick Creek down at 6860, and then you have Shower Falls at 8100 feet. Um, so it's nice to have those to compare to for data. So I started by choosing sites. Um, I chose eight across Canyon, and I tried to make you know paralleling elevation bands across Canyon with the boards. So like one in Flanders. And I can actually point out to start just so we get oriented. Um, the reservoir is like right here, and then the main fork road. You can go to here. Uh, Highlight Peaks here. Um, the Flanders drainage is here. East Fork there. So if that orients people a little better. Um, so I essentially tried to place boards, you know, across Canyon at elevations that were similar. So we have these lower ones that are all pretty similar, and then. The lower Main Fork site and the lower Blackmore site are similar. Um, then the Shower Falls Snow Tell and the second Main Fork site are similar. Um, most everything is within 300 vertical feet of each other when they're in similar elevation bands. And then the highest site was this Main Fork one. It was up in the Highlight Basin, below Highlight Peak. And then similar to up in Blackmore, it was up in the Blackmore Basin. So chose those sites. This is kind of <coughs> typically what the site would look like. This is me setting up uh, the second <coughs> fork site. So you're far away from trees. There's no like shrubbery. There's nothing um, to really affect it. And generally these spots are not, not really wind affected at all. They're very sheltered and protected, which is nice. Um, a few of the boards I put up, like I put one up at History Rock that I'd never seen History Rock before. So I didn't really know where to put it for wind. So that one was when affected, I would just move it. So anything that started out, I could note at the start when I visited it if the snow was when affected um, and change that. So these are the sites I picked. Um, History Rock, here's the Blackmore drainage, Blackmore Peaks right here. The main fork is here. Um, again, Highlight Peak is here, Divide Peak is here. Um, so these are showing all the site locations. So the goal is to get to all these and high pressure days after storms um, and check all these boards. So, um, sign these boards uh, by a 16 by 16 inch through quarter inch plywood and then instead people typically use like metal, like a pipe. Um, I used plastic just for weight because I had to haul them around the canyon. Um, and also for like heat transfer, I kind of figured that maybe there would be something with that. So using plastic flange and plastic PVC. Um, so I built those and then time to my backpack <laughs> and get strange licks and haul them around highlight. This is early season trying to get into Flanders, skinning across creek. Um, so that's kind of typically what that looked like, early season. Um, then I had to decide when I was going to check them. So at the beginning of the season I made a cutoff at like six inches because typically highlight will get these really nice you know, six to eight inch storms, and it'll be like five high pressure days. And this winter, <laughs> started snowing in September, and you know, just like huge storms. And so I had to increase the cutoff because I would have been in a highlight like way more than I could feasibly pull off. Um, so I put my cutoff at 12 inches. So anytime I checked a snow tell, shower falls, and if that was reporting, you know, 10 inches, I'd probably go and check all the boards knowing that there's probably more snow than that. Um, so either cumulatively, so let's say it's snowed, you know, two inches over, you know, a week and a half, um, <coughs> leading up to over a foot, I'd go check it then. Or in one storm cycle often, it would just have a big storm and I'd have to go check them. Um, aimed for high pressure days, which was really hard this year. There weren't, weren't many <laughs> sunny days. And um, it was nice to pull snow tell data and Flanders data to look at compared to what was going on there. So again, that Flanders is about at 10,000 feet, so that's like 700 millibar height. So this is typically, again, once I place it, what they'd look like when I go to visit them again. Um, there's usually like a really nice settlement cone around them, um, which was nice to tell that you know, the snow had settled. Um, often, if one was wind affected, it'd just be packed onto the board. So that was a good way 
showing, but this is kind of your typical site again, pretty far away from trees or anything that would pop off trees and kind of affect that. And this site's in Flanders. So put all these boards out um, for checking uh, data off them. I took total depth of the snowpack around the board as well, like a set area away from each board just so I could keep track of total depth in the places as well. Um, and I just used a probe for that. And then would average a bunch of probes to make sure everything was aligning. It wasn't just probing somewhere that was randomly deep or randomly shallow. And then I checked snow water using a snow metrics gauge. Um, and it has just a little scale and it essentially measures the amount of water in a core sample based on weight. So it would just show you inches or millimeters of water right there, which was really nice. And then obviously other things I recorded like when the last snowfall was, current weather, temperatures, wind, um, everything else that I could record when I visited these sites. So checking them, this is kind of what that would look like. Um, often it was really deep and I didn't want to just like push like compact snow down. So you'd take like a crystal card and sort of make separate core samples. And I'd take um, off this 16 by 16 inch board, you know, three or four samples and I could average the snow water off of them to make sure that it was all aligning and they'd all be very close. So making sure that I was getting accurate readings off these boards. So that was sort of this, what this gauge looks like and what that process looks like of averaging those. As with any field-based science work, <laughs> issues that arose, uh, I already mentioned the wind. Um, out of few sites, I had to just move the boards a little bit over to more sheltered spots. Um, traffic from people, uh, being the first person in highlight after storms, I was often setting all the skin tracks <laughs> in the highlight and people would just follow them and then just like follow them to the board. <laughs> which is often far off course from any good skiing. <laughs> so they just follow them. Then there'd be like some curious pull pricks at the board, <laughs> which um, obviously I had to throw out those, which was a little frustrating. So I just tried to hide them. I'd make like a fake skin track and just <laughs> um, Very few high pressure days. Again, that was the great part about this winter, but also frustrating for this project because is really hard to squeeze in checking the boards in between storms this year, or it's just so much consistent moisture that it's like impossible. Also, snowshoes hairs like really dug them for some reason. Like they really, literally, would love digging around in them, um, <laughs> <laughs> which also happened once. But. So, next I'll get to comparing. Oh no, yeah. So we have surface hoar two, I accounted for. That would grow, you know, in a day or two on a high pressure day. This is like a nice surface hoar growing on top. I thought it was pretty. But uh, I'd kind of paintbrush it off and measure the, like the sweet using that. And then I measured with it and it was such a minimal amount that I just started measuring with it. So surface hoar, um, again, the rabbits, and this was skin track. Right by the bird. <laughs> So getting down with the data, uh, I wanted to calculate the average sweep per storm, um, compare it to the shower falls in Lick Creek, and then different ways of looking at it, which would help kind of pull out patterns, um, was calculating percent of average sweep per site um, for all the storms, and then trying to minimize these outliers. So I culled a bunch of data like from you know, the board that was affected by people or wind affected board. So kind of what that looks like, in its starting process, you kind of, you know, here are all the sites, here are the snow tells. This is from one storm. This is like storm two, we'll say. So this is from one storm event, all the different sites. Um, what I did was average all these numbers, so you get an average amount of sweep per board. And then here, this is showing if it's below, like more red is more below the average, more green is above. So it's kind of easier to pull out which ones are kind of above or below average. Um, I also did this for the height of snow on the boards, but obviously that changes with settlement and that kind of thing. And then I calculated percent of average. So 
this is an example of one site in particular. That highest main fork site gets a ton of snow. So it's always really well above the average. So this is kind of an example of what I'm trying to pull out of this data more. I also read quality of data just based on the fact that some of it, some of the boards were affected or some I had to pull out. So I rated these storms. Um, this one was due to the fact that a uh, Blackmore site was wind affected, so I had to move it. The rest of these are good. This one is fair because, you know, you can see there's almost a month between these two checking in. So that's a long time to go. Um, so that one, that wasn't as good, but the rest was fairly good data. Um, and I just took that first storm out because there were only two boards left then. So kind of getting into what I looked at. Um, this is a wind rose based off of Flanders data. So from the time where I placed the boards and then checked them, this, this day um, is this time frame. And this is all the wind recorded at Flanders, the direction and the speed when it was snowing over that time frame. So this is just averaging the wind when it was snowing to kind of have a better visual representation of kind of what the flow is happening around highlight um, when you're getting this kind of patterning. And this is the 300 millibar jet. So it's neat to be able to compare, you know, where the moisture is coming from, and what's happening, and then what, what's happening in Flanders. And then kind of looking at these lines and seeing if patterns develop. So we can look at the next one. Um, which I think is pretty interesting because you have a lot of snow at Flanders, but you also have like a north component too coming in with moisture. So kind of looking at, uh, you know, what's happening with these lines over time, what's happening with the jet, what Flanders is reporting, and trying to put together these flat patterns. But you'll see in all these that the main fork is often well above, well above <laughs> shower. And I mean, shower is generally at or below that main fork one site, which is at a lower elevation as well. Um, Flanders is the same elevation as the east fork in, in this next one. Oh yeah. So yeah, this is the Flanders for the, these two storms I made percent of average. Um, and it's well above, you know, average for this storm and the next storm that I'll show you. And just kind of trying to figure out why certain sites are favored with certain flows. Um, this is the next storm um, that Flanders was also favored. Also has a north component too. So maybe seeing what's like tying these things together and looking at sort of these linear patterns that may pop out. But again, Flanders is at the same elevation as History Rock. In fact, those are very close in elevation, but they vary pretty greatly in snowfall amount pretty distinct patterning, um, main fork well above mm -hmm. everywhere else. Um, again, the two snow tells are here and uh, shower is about at that main fork site, but this was the one where a uh, large frame, like span of time had happened, so I didn't, and people had disturbed this main fork two board. So again, the quality of data isn't good, but this one, was checked maybe a week and a half later. So very small frame of time. Um, and seeing this like patterning, you know, the main fork is almost at three inches of water here and pretty much everywhere else is below two. So that's pretty distinct difference. Also looking at, you know, like these Blackmore sites compared to the Snowtel um, are pretty interesting. So preliminary, conclusions that I can draw from all this are that generally sites in the main fork receive more snow. Um, Shower Falls does report similarly to that site that's at a lower elevation for whatever reason um, with the flow. Um, Flanders and History Rock are closest in elevation, but Flanders definitely gets more snow. And the highest main fork site is favored for the flow of moisture. But there's obviously a lot of improvements. So this is just my preliminary air of doing this and trying it out. Um, I'd really like to target storm events more instead of having this random span of time and a cutoff at 12, um, because it's really hard to pluck out patterns based on Flanders and based on the jet um, for multiple events 
just leading up to X amount of snowfall. So I want to target specific events, even if it's you know two inches of snow, or whatever. As long as there's a something measurable there, I can target a specific time, have people <laughs> go out, um, check all the boards in one day, which would be really nice to be able to do. Um, and that could better tie like what you're seeing in those roses to the jet to the snowfall amounts. Um, better signage <laughs> so people kind of know to not poke them would be nice. <laughs> um, I'm going to put a board right at Shower Falls um, just to see what that shows as well. Um, total depth stakes would also be nice just so I'm not probing around the site all the time. Uh, more boards. <laughs> um, I'd really like to put boards farther up the Flanders and East Fork drainages, which is hard because they close the road um, December 30th, so it adds a two mile road skin to things. But um, Flanders, I think, gets a lot of snow. Um, that might be comparable data to the main fork, which would be really interesting for water reasons as well, um, as well as the East Fork. So determining kind of what's happening in those because no one really knows what like how much water is coming out of those areas either. Um, yeah, and again targeting the specific events. But overall, by the end of this, 234 <laughs> miles on skis <laughs> this year in highlight, and that's just checking the boards. That's without. I would often like ski around too. So that's how many miles this season I put on, which is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> But it's a cool place to ski, so I don't mind. It's pretty fun. And that's it. Thanks yeah. a lot. Yeah.